Good morning. Welcome to Green Lake Church Zoom Church or YouTube Church, uh, getting together via electronics. I hope you're doing okay out there. I'm going crazy with this lockdown. Um, I need to see some real people. Screens and, and uh, microphones and speakers, they're wonderful. Boy, I'm hungry to see some real people, to touch some real people. So I hope you're doing well. Hope you're finding somebody that you can hold on to, somebody you can touch, somebody you can connect with in real life um, out there in your house, in your neighborhood or something. Um, we have a number of announcements to share with you this morning. Um, first, I, an announcement that I really, um, I would love to include some people to come and talk to you, but that'll have to wait for another time. We added a Sabbath school class this week. So right now we have, let's see, how many adult classes do we have here at Green Lake Church meeting on Zoom? We have uh, the uh, chapel Sabbath school class. We have the through the Bible Sabbath school class. We now have the library Sabbath school class that met this morning for the first time. I'll be eager to hear a report about that. We have the children's Sabbath school class led out by Elise uh, Lambeth. We have the junior Sabbath school class. We have the youth Sabbath school class. So lots of uh, ways for people to connect with each other. And then on Friday nights, the choir is meeting together via Zoom. So if you're hungry for um, some, some connection with people, it's through Zoom. Unfortunately, we're not in person. But if you'd like to connect with some people, catch up on their stories and what's doing in their life, these are some opportunities that uh, we have here at Green Lake Church. Uh, you can get in touch with us and we can get you in touch with the leaders of the various groups so you can join in. We had a, 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 a good report today. I uh, just heard that uh, Matt's dad that we've prayed for the last couple of weeks is out of the hospital. Um, and so his recovery is moving forward. We're delighted to hear that. Um, Karin and I got a wonderful letter this week from Sophie. Um, yeah, Sophie, right? Mm -hmm. uh, boy, I, I'm sorry, Sophie. I almost mixed you up with uh, Fiona. Uh, Sophie Parvis sent us a wonderful letter. Thank you. Man, did you realize that snail mail still happens? People can do that. You can put a stamp on something and the letter actually arrives. Uh, so thank you, Sophie. That was wonderful. Um, next week, next uh, Sabbath, we have a guest speaker, Fred Cornforth. Uh, he's been a leader in ASI. Uh, I've enjoyed my conversations with him a lot, and I think you will enjoy him too. So uh, I'll be here but uh, Fred will do the preaching for us. Let's see. Um, I have, uh, Karen is sitting here beside me, so I'm going to have her slip into this chair and she can pass some greetings on as well. Uh, good morning. It's wonderful to be here. And uh, I enjoyed the, the fireside uh, Sabbath school just a few minutes ago. We, we, uh, said goodbye after a, a spirited discussion. Um, some things that happened in, in my life this uh, week. Um, we had a family at uh, the Meridian guest house, and um, it was just wonderful to be able to host them. And the, the little boy, Connor, uh, had a successful surgery. Um, and we will also, they'll be back and we'll probably hear more about this later, but they were so grateful for being able to be uh, here and have a safe place to stay. Um, and then we've gotten Don and his crew have been amazing and they've already gotten the washer and dryer installed upstairs. And, and so Erica's now able to um, be not having to go down through that guest uh, suite and um, we're able to have, have what we need to keep our guests safe and to keep the, the, any women upstairs um, safe um, in this time. So that's been an exciting thing. On a personal note, we had a, a newborn calf born at the farm uh, and finally we're able to get him to be able to nurse on his mom. So that was uh, wonderful. <laughs> uh, nice not have to be able to not have to make him 
uh, go over there and just try to work and work and work back breaking and sitting in the dirt and mud and other things, trying to get him to get on. So we're excited about that. Um, also excited and we'll be hearing a, a from Greg, I think it has a video uh, says home and we're very excited uh, that that's that she's home and we're excited that the baby's doing well. So now I think we'll go to Pastor Hans. Thank you, Kari. Um, <laughs> happy Sabbath Church. Uh, as John mentioned, yes, I need to see real people as well. Him and I are on the same boat. So you are missed. Uh, well, this past week we had um, some beautiful weather. Due to that beautiful weather, I spent time at Green Lake. And while there, to my surprise, I ran into Jeff Ellis. Well, he actually ran into me. Um, he invited me on a run with him and I smiled at, at him and said, no, have a good day, Jeff. <laughs> and Jeff ran off. Um, because we are, are running into each other much less frequently these past days, we're, we've been, Gumi and I have been working really hard uh, to keep the church family connected. So following this, um, the church service, we have a special uh, a presentation for you. So please stay tuned after the post loop. Um, we have, we have, um, we want to thank everyone for, be, um, for being willing and patient with Gumi and I this past week as we unexpectedly dropped by at your homes. <laughs> I, 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 I hope you enjoy um, the presentation that we have for you all. In other news, as Karen mentioned, it's my pleasure to announce that we have a new baby in our church family. I won't tell you about the child myself. I'll let the father have that honor. So Gumi, may you please roll the clip. Hey, Green Lake church family. Uh, it's Greg here. Um, just wanted to give you guys an update. You guys can probably hardly hear me because I have my mask on. But uh, I just want to thank you guys for all the blessings and everything, all the prayers uh, that you guys have brought upon us. Um, there's a saying that says it, it takes a village to raise a child. But you guys have been a part of our village and we just want to thank you guys. And um, here's Melody Rose. <laughs> There's mom. Hello. So Melody Rose was born April 26, 2020 at 2 41 in the morning uh, she weighed in right at five pounds 11 ounces um 18 and a half inches with everything going on you know we just really just give you know a lot of a lot of praise to god and also our support group we thank you guys for everything. Thank you guys for blessing us and giving us the opportunity to make this happen with everything going on in the world right now. God has made a way. Uh, we thank you guys for everything. Blessings to all and um, we'll keep in touch. We love you guys. God bless. Bye. Thank you, Gumi. Um, please remember to stay tuned after the post loads because we still have another um, special presentation for you. The opening hymn for today will be hymn number four, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven.
Let's have prayer now. <clears throat> Creator of earth and sky and sea, maker of rocks and birds and trees and all that is. Thank you for calling us into your presence this morning, for gathering via the means of electronics for this time of worship, praise, petition, thinking, and connecting with one another. Lord of the nations, we pray that you will hasten the day when swords are turned into plowshares and spears are turned into pruning hooks and justice rolls down like the great river. Lord of the seasons, we pray that you will move us quickly past the season of epidemic and into a season of, of greater freedom of movement and freedom of interaction. Lord of our hearts, we pray that you will work in us and through us that in the week to come, we may act as your partners, as agents of the kingdom of heaven, accomplishing justice and peace. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, Charlene Morrow will call for the morning offering. Our offering today is for the local church budget. If you're like me, you probably haven't been looking at the year-to-date budget summary in the bulletin lately. At the moment, we are approximately $10,000 below our budget goal. Our fiscal year ends in two months, so please consider what you are able to give to help us catch up. As you probably know by now, you can give online using the link to Adventist Giving on the church website. You can also mail the checks directly to Claire Neerham, the church treasurer. If you mail a check to the church, it will take extra time, but will eventually make its way to Claire. Also, please consider giving a little extra for Hands Across the Water. I know it's not as fun to mark the little box online as it is to see the smiling, eager faces of the kids coming with their blue buckets, but perhaps you can think of our Green Lake kids when you're donating to help the children in the Andaman Islands School. Please join me in prayer. God, thank you for the many gifts you have given us. Please bless what we give so that it may be used to help others. Amen.
Good morning, boys and girls. It was an exciting day in the little town of Bethsaida on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee. Somebody had spotted Jesus in town early that morning, and he'd just gotten in Peter's boat to go across the north point corner of the lake to a mountainside. Little lad rushed inside and said, Mama, Mama, everybody's going to see Jesus. Can I go? And she said, Yes, you can go, but you need a lunch. And since Bethsaida means house of fishing, you can guess what little lad had in his lunch. Five little barley buns and two little dried fish. It was so exciting that day because many people came to be healed and Jesus told such good stories. The whole day went by and little lad forgot about eating and so did everybody else. As it got late in the afternoon, people started to get hungry. And so Jesus said, story time is over. You disciples find some food for these people. And one of the disciples said, it would take a year's wages to get food for all these people. Jesus said, find something to eat. So they found little lad and his lunch. Now, if one of the disciples came to you and asked for your lunch, would you have given your lunch to Jesus? I hope I would have. Anyway, Jesus multiplied those five little barley buns and two small fish to feed over 5,000 people. I've often thought, wouldn't it be exciting to have been there? But you know, Jesus is doing exciting things today, just like he did 2,000 years ago. Just last summer, there was a church group who went to Mexico to help restore a broken down church. The roof was leaking, the shrubs outside were dead, needed to be painted inside and out. Denise was in charge of the food, and when they got all of the church fixed up, and they decided they ought to have a party to celebrate. And all the people there, about 25 members, were so happy to have their church all fixed up again. You know something? All week long, all the people in town had been noticing everything going on. So when Denise went to buy the food, the pastor told her, well, we have 25 members. Maybe you should get twice that much food because we might have some extra people. So Denise bought 40 packages of donuts and cookies and 25 gallon jugs of juice because it was very hot and they thought everybody would be extra thirsty. But you know, when they had their celebration party, all the neighborhood around crammed into the church. Instead of 30 people, 150 people packed in. And Denise came to the pastor and said, what am I going to do? I only have food for 50 people. The pastor said, just give the food out, and we'll see what the Lord will do. Anyway, uh, they started giving out the food after they had their praise service, and the pastor talked to the people. And she kept opening packages of cookies and donuts. They kept pouring juice, and everybody had seconds, and some even had thirds. And when all the people left that night, the people helping Denise counted up all the packages of tr of the donuts and cookies in the trash. Do you know how many they found? There were 100 empty packages of donuts, and they started out with 40. And there were 12 boxes of donuts and cookies left over, so the food was multiplied. And now what about the juice? She had bought 25 gallons. There were 80 empty juice jugs in the garbage and seven gallons still on the refrigerator so the miracle of food and juice multiplying happened again just last year in a little town in mexico so boys and girls don't ever underestimate what jesus can do for you have a good sabbath Please pray with me. God, we know you are our loving heavenly parent. In this time of uncertainty, we pray that all of us and all of those in leadership positions around the world will be guided by the Holy Spirit to make wise decisions which will glorify you. We pray for peace and comfort for everyone who is struggling with sickness, loneliness, 
fear, grief, and hunger. In our own church family, we pray for Jennifer, Becky, Nola Jean, Rhonda, and the Green Lake daycare workers, and all others with needs we may not be aware of. Help us to know how we can be conduits of your love. We were so happy to welcome little Melody Rose this week. Please be with her and her family. Many in our community and around the world are depending on help to get the food they need. Be with them and with those who are working to provide for them. Thank you for forgiving our many failings. May we also forgive as you have forgiven. When we are tempted to get discouraged about what is happening in our lives and in the world around us, please help us to remember that you are with us. We praise you for your many blessings. And now, as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray, help us to not just recite the words we know so well, but meditate on their meaning now and in the week to come. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is Proverbs 28, 4 through 11. To reject the law is to praise the wicked. To obey the law is to fight them. Evil people don't understand justice, but those who follow the Lord understand completely. Better to be poor and honest than to be dishonest and rich. Young people who obey the law are wise. Those with wild friends bring shame to their parents. Income from charging high interest rates will end up in the pockets of someone who is kind to the poor. God detests the prayers of a person who ignores the law. Those who lead good people along an evil path will fall into their own trap, but the honest will inherit good things. Rich people may think they are wise, but a poor person with discernment can see right through them.
The New Testament reading is Matthew 5, 33 through 37. You have also heard that our ancestors were told, you must not break your vows. You must carry out the vows you make to the Lord. But say, do not make any vows. Do not say, by heaven, because heaven is God's throne. And do not say, by the earth, because the earth is his footstool. And do not say, by Jerusalem, for Jerusalem is the city of the great king. Do not even say, by my head, for you can't turn one hair white or black. Please just say a simple, yes, I will, or no, I won't. Anything beyond this is from the evil one. May the Lord bless the hearing of the word. Thank you, Violet, Oliver, for the scripture reading. And maybe uh, I should take just a second to give thanks to the people that are invisible to, you know, to most of us, but but make this happen. We, uh, Gumi, uh, Tad, and uh, Lee, who are, are uh, the technical people behind our live stream and help provide the, the music clips and that kind of thing. Thank you to Emily Kralinski, who did our special music. And of course, to our Minister of Music, Wanda Griffith, who has uh, who does our prelude, postlude, and, and coordinates so many pieces. Um, thank you so much. I'm sure there's people I'm leaving out in doing this, thanks. But uh, uh, just know those of you who are enjoying the service, that there are a lot of people, even now during lockdown, a lot of people who are involved in making the service happen. One more thing I wanna say, uh, just seconding an announcement that uh, Hans made, earlier is after the postlude today there will be a video presentation that you won't want to miss if you have any connection with green lake it's going to be some green lake people ambushed at their houses and uh, i think you will really really like it so uh, stay tuned after the postlude for that uh, that little social hour via uh, video so i brought i brought to to the church today, my favorite food. And here it is. Let's see if I can hold it up so you can see it. This is my favorite food. Or maybe this is my favorite food. Now, I'm hoping you kids are going, wait a minute, that does not look like food. That looks like two tin cans. And you're right, it is two tin cans. But inside these tin cans, I hope, is some really good food. And one of them is my favorite. Let's see. Hmm. So how would we know which one of these is my favorite? How would we know what's inside the can? Yeah. Obviously, we could get a can opener. We could open the can and we could look and see what's in it. Then we could smell it. And then finally, if we're brave, we could taste it. And then if we wanted to, we might say, yeah, we have a general idea of what it is. Now, my favorite food is pumpkin, pumpkin pie to be more precise. But it starts out as pumpkin. Now, in the grocery store, if you buy a can of pumpkin, you can buy a can of plain pumpkin, which is necessary for my wife's pie because she adds all her own seasonings. And she, of course, makes the best pie in the whole world. And if she starts out with, pie, with pumpkin that already had seasonings in it, then it would not be the best pie in the whole world. So it'd be messed up. So how would we know whether the pumpkin in one of these cans is, is unadulterated pumpkin, pure pumpkin? Well, as I mentioned, we can open the can, we can look at it, we can smell it, we can taste it. But then if we have my wife taste it, because she has a very sensitive taster, she could tell you whether there was anything added, like spices or salt or anything like that. But you know what? There's an easier way to tell. Read the label. In fact, these two cans, one can is black beans. That's high on my list. One can is pumpkin. And instead of having to open the can to see what's in it, it would be kind of sad to open a can of black beans when I was hoping to get a pumpkin pie. I mean, as good as black beans are, and I really like black beans, I, it would be a sad story to 
get beans instead of pie. But fortunately, in our world, we have labels. And if you read the label, it will tell you what's in the can. And in fact, when I look at this, I look down to the ingredients section. It says ingredients, pumpkin, no salt, no spices, no herbs, nothing else. It's just pumpkin, which would mean that my wife could take what was in off. And then you go, how do you know which can is pumpkin? I cheated. I wrote on the lid so that I could put the labels back on. You know, labels are really important. We count on them. The quality of our life depends on having accurate labels. Um, I, I opened a jar, I mean, I pulled a jar of peanut butter out of our refrigerator and I read the ingredient list on it. And it said, peanuts and salt, period, nothing else. And then I thought, ha, huh, but I wonder what Jiffy peanut butter has in it. So I Googled Jiffy peanut butter and I read the ingredient label for Jiffy peanut butter. And it started out with peanuts and sugar. And then it said it had some fully hydrogenated soybean oil or something like that. I'm forgetting all the details. It had another four or five ingredients. They were small amounts, less than 2% each, but they, but they had a number of other things. And I thought, no, I think I like the peanut butter in my refrigerator that's just peanuts and salt. Of course, you could get peanut butter that didn't even have salt. That was just pure peanuts. And the label would tell you that. And we depend on labels. I was interested to read the label on our peanut jar, peanut butter jar, because after it listed the ingredients, it then said, you need to be aware that this peanut butter is processed in a plant that also processes other tree nuts, almonds, pecans, coconuts, I think another nut or two. And then it said, people with food allergies or food sensitivities need to read this label carefully. And the idea is that for some people, a tiny bit of peanut butter or a tiny bit of peanuts can, can, can be deadly. So it's really important that we be able to read a label and count on it. It's so important to us that we, in fact, have government agencies whose job it is to make sure that food labels are accurate. So when you read a label, you can trust it. And life works better that way when we can trust the label. You know, this reminds me of the uh, passage that we read from first, well, we read the New Testament passage from Jesus, and we read the Old Testament passage in Proverbs, both of which talked about honesty. And I laughed when I read the one in, in Proverbs. What's worse than being poor? Now, if you read through the book of Proverbs, in the book of Proverbs, poverty is always seen as a problem. You don't want to be poor. And often in the book of Proverbs, it gives us counsel on how to avoid poverty. You've got to work hard. You've got to save. You, there, there's all this advice on what you can do to avoid poverty. And then in the verse that opened our Old Testament reading, we find out there's something worse than being poor. And that's being dishonest. So all the way through the book of Proverbs, the, the person who's writing this, these things, he wishes you were rich. He wishes I was rich because wealth creates opportunities and power to do good. Lots of things, good things we can do with money. So the writer of Proverbs wants us all to be rich. And then he says, but it is way better to be poor and honest than to be dishonest and rich. Honesty is one of the foundational values that runs all the way through the Bible. You go back to the writings of Moses and the Ten Commandments. Don't bear false witness against your neighbor. Why? Because it, that, that ancient community was committed to justice. And in any human society, the very best society, sometimes conflicts will arise. 
problems will arise between people. And it is the job of the judges and the courts to help achieve justice when there's conflict between people. But how does the court work? How do judges work? They have to depend on testimony. They have to pen, depend on what, what information is brought to them by other people. And so the fundamental foundational rule for human society in the Old Testament is tell the truth. That's how we'll get to the best possible life together. And then we come to the New Testament, to Jesus. And I, I almost laugh when I read this New Testament passage. Jesus said, you have heard it said that when you, when you make an oath, when you swear an oath, you should do what you promise to do. And then Jesus says, you know what? Don't bother telling an oath, making an oath. Just tell the truth. Say yes or say no and mean what you say. Anything more than that is a problem. Um, tell the truth. It's the, way, it's the way society works best. It's what Jesus called us to. It's what Moses called us to. It's what God calls us to. And now I want to, to take just a little twist on this theme of telling the truth. What would prompt us to not tell the truth? Just this week, uh, a friend of mine from long ago and far away, from my childhood days, uh, posted something on Facebook. And the post was about, uh, it had to do with the current emergency, the epidemic. And the post was the story. My friend was quoting a, a story that somebody else had told that this person's mother had died of a heart attack. Then the hospital changed the cause of death from heart attack to COVID. And then the rest of the post was complaining, saying this was horrible, terrible, awful, such things should never happen. And of course, it is important that in the medical system, the records are honest. Well, I looked at this post and I got suspicious because I noticed up at the top you could tell that the post had been copied, but the name of the original person who had written it was cut off. So you had no idea where the story came from. Then I looked a little closer and I noticed there were misspellings. There were weird capitalizations. There was funny grammar. And I'm going, hmm, does this person know what they're talking about? And then I noticed right near the end in this post that was designed to get Americans worked up and angry about how American healthcare was not properly counting the effects of the uh, epidemic. I noticed some initials, NHS. NHS, what is that? Turns out that's the initials for the British healthcare system. It has nothing to do with America at all. And then I began laughing and I wrote back to my friend and I said, you know, this is a serious accusation. You're saying some doctor deliberately distorted medical records. But you don't cite a source. And the story that you're telling here looks very fishy. If you're going to make an accusation, one of the first obligations of a Christian is you triple and quadruple verify it. Don't spread stories that get people all upset if you cannot verify absolutely that the story is true. Part of the reason we sometimes don't tell the truth is because we repeat stories that are appealing to us. They, we want to believe them, and so we happily believe them and repeat them without checking them out. The funniest example of this is people get emails promising them lots of money. And you read these emails and you go, how could anybody ever believe these emails? The reason we believe them is because we would like to get the money. In preparation for this sermon, I checked my spam folder. I had a whole bunch of emails in my spam folder offering me millions of dollars. Um, I had emails from India and Ghana and 
oh, I can't remember all the various places. And the best one was from somebody who said that um, she was representing the United Nations Debt Reconciliation Department and a credit union in Texas. And all I needed to do, she said, to receive $32 million was to send her my, my personal information and my bank account information. And she would right away make sure that we got $32 million um, into, uh, into my account. <laughs> and I'm going, oh, really? Why would anybody fall for something like this? Well, we fall for things like this because we want them to be true. I, I would have not mind if somebody gave me $32 million, if there were no strings attached. That would be wonderful. Um, and same thing in the political realm and otherwise. We repeat stories because we want them to be true. We're sure they must be true but we fail to do the kind of checking that is our obligation as people who are committed to truth. There's simply no way we can have a healthy community, a healthy church, a healthy family, a healthy society, except as we practice telling the truth. We're followers of Jesus. Let's take his, his uh, teaching very, very seriously. Say yes when we mean yes. Say no when we mean no. And never tell a story that makes somebody else look bad. Unless we have double, triple, and quadruple checked it to make sure that in fact it is true because we are people of the truth. Now, we're going to go to the closing hymn. But I want to remind you once more, we're going to have a closing hymn, we'll have a benediction, and we'll have a postlude. And then following the postlude, there will be the video that Hans and uh, Gumi have put together. I've seen it already. It's fantastic. You don't want to miss it. So be sure and stay all the way through to the video following the postlude. So now we will go to our uh, closing hymn. Oops. Well, I'm going to let Gumi put it up because I uh, didn't have my uh, bulletin here in front of me.
Let's pray. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen.
is my song, praising my Savior all the day long.